Hey everybody, let's get back into Unity. I've actually been in Unity for a while, but I haven't created anything worth showing, so I'm going to show something someone else created. This is a really, really cool tool called Deferred Decals. Now, Unreal Engine put Deferred Decals into their primary pipeline. For Unity, you're going to have to go and download it, but you can still get them. Uh, it's just a, a specific a specific little renderer, and uh, you can grab the, the link down below and go fetch it. Now, what is a deferred decal? Well, all of these are deferred decals. This method of using a deferred decal means that we have a bounding box, and then that bounding box is associated with a texture, and that texture can be just visuals, like colors, or it can also be a normal map, like these, and uh, or it can be both. And these things work really well because as you move the bounding box, it changes what it's being applied to. So if I start to move this down, as as the uh, meshes start to emerge from the top of the bounding box, they start to become clean. And I can do it the other way as well. This makes these really cheap. These are super cheap textures, uh, super cheap decals. You can use a lot of them. I don't know about mobile games, but PC uh, games can, can handle it, no problem. But the downside of this is that these use a single direction projection. Rather than wrapping around the target, they just melt onto the target. And you can see that here, where we've got this deformation. And moreover, it just gives up at a certain point. You can see how this part is clean. It's within the bounding box, and this part too. It's within the bounding box, but the raycast doesn't end up... It's not even a raycast. The projection doesn't end up actually projecting anything onto those surfaces, because it's moving vertically, and those surfaces, surfaces are too close to vertical. So... Uh, if we wanted to apply it to those surfaces, we would have to be more careful about how we tip it. But even if we tip it more carefully, we're still going to have a rough time of it due to the way that this engine works. And that's just a limitation you're going to have to live with. If you're projecting onto flat surfaces, it works great. But if you are projecting onto curved surfaces, it's going to melt. And then it's going to error out. Still, it's a really nice tool for making unique imprints on your world. The obvious example is bullet holes. If, you're got, if you've got someone who's shooting up your walls, you can apply little textures that are bullet holes to those walls, and you'll see that a lot in, in common, common games these days. Uh, those kinds of, of bullet hole textures are cheap and efficient, uh, and you don't have to change the wall mesh at all. This is also good for applying unique textures to things that are repeating. For example, if you have walls, you may want to put one of these projections such that it splashes across a dozen walls, or just one wall, or something like that. And you don't have to worry about the fact that all of your walls have the same UV map, the same materials. Uh, you can use this and just uh, ignore that. One of the issues you are going to have is that uh, using one of these for every single wall in your game will probably get a little bit processing intensive. One of the things you're going to have to be careful of is that the vertical projection, that's a definitely a limiting factor, and you want to be aware of what sorts of problems that's going to cause. So for example, if we move this decal onto our guy, you can see that it broadcasts across him reasonably well, and we get some kind of fun shape screwing up our guy. And that might be really fun. For example, you might be able to use like a light, make this like a, a blades of light coming through, through a... Uh, um, through a keyhole or something, you could you could broadcast it onto a person and it would look great and you wouldn't have to actually simulate the light. But it has a lot of limitations. For example, when his face goes vertical, it stops working. There's also some kind of conflict with how vertical it's allowed to get based on the size of the mesh, uh, or the, the bounding box. So for example, if we shrink this down and then we drag it up above his chest like so, you can see that it doesn't apply properly to this area of the chest, even though it's within the bounding box and it's not vertical. There's something something going on about uh, ratios or something. I'm not real clear on it. But the end result is that you're going to have to really struggle to polish this if you're broadcasting it onto a curved surface. Also, since these don't deform with the character, I don't recommend putting them on characters. Uh, if our character gets up and moves away, this won't go with him. Even if we bind it to a bone, it's not going to bend when he bends. It'll just remain a flat projection. So that's going to be rough. Um, you're going to want to be careful. I would recommend only using these on static surfaces or machinery that won't bend. Still, if you're looking for a way to add in a lot of graphical complexity to your game world, things like bullet holes or unique 
messes on walls or uh, people spray painting stuff. Um, this is a great way to do it, and it's really easy. Uh, you find the link down below, go grab it, play with it. If you do something cool with it, let me know. It's not mine, but I'd love to see it anyway. And I'm hopeful that at some point I will make something worth sharing, but it's been a while, and uh, all of my stuff is coming out crappy.